Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the legendary Rogers Comedy Room in Houston, Texas. This is the Riot Comedy Club. Make some fucking noise! This is the House of Riot Houston. You put this on the Riot Comedy Club. Now make it out for your great team leader, Frank Castillo! Awesome. I'm very, very excited to be here. Welcome. It's the roast of uh, Brian Gendron. You guys ready to fucking make fun of this dude? Yeah. Hell yeah. I flew all the way from Los Angeles to do this shit. So let's have some fucking fun. All right. Clap if your friends and family is. All right. Sweet. Sweet. This is great. Awesome. Oh, hell yeah, man. They really came out to see blood. All right. This is going to be good. We got a great day, a lot of very funny comics. Um, also, just before we get this started, just so you know, there is paper on your desk, uh, or tables, that's not a desk. You got paper on your tables. Uh, we're gonna be doing something called the Afterburns. Feel free to write any roast about any comic you see, and then afterwards, we're gonna read them out loud. You guys understand that? So you guys get to get in on the fun. You get to look at all these ugly motherfuckers up here, think of some funny stuff, and then we'll read them afterwards. You excited? Come on, give your chance to write. You know what I mean? You guys can finally say everything you've always wanted to say to Brian, you know? But just anonymously. All right, cool. Thanks. Uh, no, we're not we're not fishing for information. We already got it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Awesome. Uh, let's go ahead and bring up your dates. Y'all excited? Come on, let's bring up. Let's go ahead and bring up this fucking disgusting Waffle House staff of fucking people. Come on up, guys. Give it up for your fires for tonight. Give it up for all your roasters. Come on up, guys. Nice round of applause. We're going to finally do what everyone wants to do and kill a guy on a bicycle, you know? Taking over those bike lanes for no reason. Ah, yeah, all right, they're really excited. Look at these guys. Look, oh, just all the people that ask you for money in a Walmart parking lot. All right. Look, we got Shelby, we got Nathaniel, we got Adam, this guy, um, Drew Jordan. Um, all right, man. Yeah, this man is Brian's forty years old. Yeah. Clap. Do you guys all know how it used to be back in the day? Clap if you met old Brian. Yeah, those are his cocaine dealers. Uh, very excited to see Shelby Morgan here, guys. Nice round of applause. She's a fucking. Houston Sable, very funny, winner of a lot of roast battles. Uh, she kind of looks like Kat Dennings from Two Broke Girls, except she's one broke girl that loves to get choked, you know what I mean? She does look like a fat guy transitioning into someone's uncle. Listen, I'm not saying Shelby's got a fat pussy, but after you finish going down on her, you get a shirt that says, I ate the fourth funniest girl in Austin, and all I got was hepatitis. Oh, trust me, it's going to get a lot worse, guys. <laughs> Shelby's not pregnant, but she is expecting a DoorDash order at any time, guys. <laughs> I hate that you guys clapped. Are you guys ready to get this show started? Let me hear. All right, perfect. Um, all right, so we also have Drew Jordan here. Drew's wife left, if you don't know, Drew's wife left him for a woman, but as she put it, for a real man. Drew looks like he's getting gauges. Oh, wait, hold on, sorry. <laughs> Drew looks like getting gauges would be the only chance he has a chance. Uh, God damn it, sorry. I can't even read my own writing. Drew looks like getting gauges would be his only chance to ever stretch out any holes. <laughs> he does not get pussy. <laughs> Drew looks like he was into pegging before it was cool. We got Adam Radliff here. Nice round of applause. Is it Radcliffe or Radliff? Oh, okay, good, good. You look like Louis C.K. if he jerked off in front of his DoorDash drivers. Adam looks like the kind of white guy who only sings rap songs during karaoke, but he only says the N-word. I think that's a, I think they call that the Houston staple. All right. Uh, Adam is so gross, pasty, and white. I thought he was Shelby's discharge. <laughs> Guys, I'm starting very, very good. Um, 
Nathaniel Amador's here, or as I like to call him, retarded Tito Ortiz. Nathaniel does look like a Nate Diaz brother that caught the Stockton clap. Nathaniel actually just brought a new baby into this world. Nice round of applause, everybody. Yes. Nathaniel pretends to be white the same way we pretend his baby's cute. Have any of you seen his kid? All right, cool. <laughs> Let's go ahead and bring up the man of the hour. Are you all ready to see him? Woo! Guys, nice round of applause for Brian Kendrick! Come on. Look at this fucking loser. Come on. Oh, my God. Let's just go ahead and get this out of the way. Show, show everyone your abs, you fucking weirdo. Oh my God. Look at it, it's on his Peloton bike, just naturally with something up his ass. You know what I mean? If you don't know about Brian, uh, Brian's abs are as fake as his wife's medical degree. <laughs> Brian spent $8,000 on a balloon for his festival. He could have saved so much money if they just used the air in his head. <laughs> I can tell Brian's wife wears the pants in the relationship because he's wearing her capris. Uh, Brian does stand up. He was also uh, very, very active in college. Brian was in a fraternity. It was called Delta Kappa No Punchlines. <laughs> Brian looks like a chili server who constantly forgets your appetizers. He, he did work at Chili's. Look at him. He's got flair still. Uh, Brian's a cyclist. He's a lot like An <laughs> Brian's a cyclist. He's a lot like Lance Armstrong, except he's missing both of his nuts and they're in his wife's purse. <laughs> I'm not saying Brian's racist, but he does have not in my neighborhood face. <laughs> Brian actually started comedy after he got sober, which proves that you can still make bad decisions after you quit drinking. Brian looks like he steals all of his Lululemon pants from his wife. <laughs> all right. I'm not saying Brian's a racist, but when he watches movies about Nazis, he cries at all the wrong parts. <laughs> Brian does a lot of stand-up, uh, especially here at this club. He, he, the only reason Brian gets so many spots is because he's fucking the owner, his wife. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you ready to get the show started? Let me hear! This next comic coming up to the stage, I've had the pleasure of working with her this whole weekend. She's opened up for me. She's very, very funny. One of the best roast battlers I've seen in Houston. Guys, nice round of applause for Shelby Morgan! Thank you, Frank. Frank looks like he's only here because he heard there'd be a fat white woman on stage. <laughs> Give it up for Drew Jordan for coming out tonight. I want to tell Drew congrats on his successful photography career, but I knew the first time I saw him that eventually he'd shoot a bunch of people. <laughs> Drew actually has a Jewish girlfriend. Uh, she's here. She's just under the floorboards hiding from Brian. She's laughing too, you just can't. Uh... <laughs> we also have Adam Radliff. Get up, give it up for Adam. <laughs> Adam did not contribute much in the writer's room, so I guess Brian hired him for his looks. Uh... <laughs> he was like, yeah, I really just want someone on stage who looks like he caused the potato famine. <laughs> Adam is such a bad writer, it's more likely someone would steal his lucky charms before they stole any of his jokes. Yeah. Give it up for Nathaniel. We got Nathaniel Amador here. Nathaniel actually has it pretty rough. His parents think he's gay since he only has one kid. Not enough Hispanics in the crowd for that one. 
But no, really, he has been through a lot. He used to just be a regular turtle before he and his three brothers fell into a puddle of radioactive keystone. And of course, you got the man of the hour, Brian Ginger. And give it up for Brian. Before I say any of this, just know this is all out of love, okay? All this week, Brian, I've been looking forward to looking you in your cold, dead eyes and telling you all the things that will probably ensure I never get booked here again. Seriously, what is up with those fucking eyes? Uh, Brian is team iPhone, but he looks like an Android. Brian has tried to give me comedy advice, which would be like my fat ass telling him how to lose weight. In fact, Brian doing stand-up is a lot like me on a diet. There's a lot of lying to yourself. <laughs> Brian's getting surgery to get his abs defined, but he still can't cut the fat from any of his jokes. <laughs> it's not invasive. It's not invasive. I'm kidding though, everyone has a favorite Brian Ginger joke. Uh, mine is his marriage. <laughs> really, a Peloton instructor who lives in Montrose that's straight? He's clean shaven, but he's definitely got a beard. Uh. Brian pretends to be self-deprecating on stage so crowds don't know he's a narcissist. Uh, there is some truth to it though. Brian says he's a piece of shit in front of crowds and we all say it behind his back, so. Brian's wife is a chiropractor and even she can't find a funny bone in his body. Brian is a bad comedian, and his wife is a chiropractor who cheats on him. He's a hack, she's a quack, and their kids are black. Now, normally you end this on a positive note, which was the hardest part of writing this. Uh, but seriously, Brian, the combination of your work ethic and sociopathic tendencies have built an amazing club. Uh, I think I speak for everyone when I say that this is really the best room in Houston. <laughs> for real. And congratulations on all of your success. <laughs> Fuck. Congratulations on, see, I told you this is hard. Congratulations. You don't know how to be nice. <laughs> I really don't. Uh, but you know, congrats and happy birthday. Nice round of applause for Fat Dennings, everybody. Let her hear it. So great, so great. You guys excited for your next roaster? Perfect. This guy uh, just moved to New York from Houston. Used to be the co-producer for some of the shows here. He's a good friend of Brian's. They uh, co-host a podcast together. When he's not doing stand-up, he's at the Vans Warped Tour trying to fuck teenagers. Guys, nice round of applause for Drew Jordan! Guys, oh man, such an honor <laughs> to be here, I think. I don't know. Oh man, give it up for your roast master, Frank Castillo, the guy. So much fun. Um, he's here for the same reason that we all are here, because Brian still has access to his wife's bank account. And so, <laughs> thanks for that. Uh, Nathaniel Amador is here. Love that guy. Um, he's Hispanic. But he, he acts so white that he actually celebrates Cinco de Mayo, I think. <laughs> I'm sorry. At least Corliss liked that. That's good. I'll take it. I'll take it. Shelby Morgan. God, such a good set. Enjoyed that. Uh, she looks like she's loud in bed, you know? And by that, I mean her farts. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. 
Uh, Brian, if you, if you know Brian, he is involved in a lot of uh, charity work, which is why uh, Adam Radliff is here tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Adam looks like he's still waiting for his baby teeth to fall out. <laughs> oh, gosh. Hey, uh, Brian, man of the hour, Brian, happy birthday. Um, yeah. happy birthday man. Brian says he has a doctor for a wife. Uh, he doesn't. She's a chiropractor, and her back is sore from carrying the financial weight of their family. <laughs> <laughs> Brian and I were going into business, going to be business partners for the riot. We decided to go 50-50, you know? I was going to put up half the money, and Elena was going to put up the other half. <laughs> <laughs> You're out. <laughs> I already left. Uh, Brian, if you don't know, Brian and his wife have an au pair. So it's kind of like their two boys have two moms and an au pair. <laughs> <laughs> if you think about it, Brian is kind of the real house husband of Houston. You know, he's got a doctor for a wife that makes all the money, and he teaches spin class. For his midlife crisis, he's going to start a scented candle business. <laughs> it's coming. The smell of douchebag. Um... No, Brian got into cycling probably because of a DUI, um, but he stuck with it because of the gay dudes. <laughs> yeah. He really just teaches spin class so he can yell at a woman he doesn't financially depend on. <laughs> Hey, look, Brian has two kids, but based on his Instagram thirst, thirst traps, he's still desperate for someone to call him daddy. <laughs> that new photo shoot is something. Uh, he stopped using cocaine years ago, but sometime, somehow he's still a... Uh, shit. <laughs> We're going to get it. Let's run that back. He stopped using cocaine years ago, but somehow he's still full of bad ideas in the bathroom. <laughs> I'm not sure why in the bathroom. I don't know. I, uh, you know, Bri Brian, Brian actually had a podcast, you know, it was called Big Ideas, Small Business, which is the same thing his wife mumbles to herself while she's using a vibrator at night. He's not, he's not dressed like I was hoping he would be dressed for, so just imagine all the other nights you've seen Brian dressed the way he dressed. They say dress for the job you want, so I guess the job Brian wants is a gay real estate agent. <laughs> Okay, yeah, that's hard to pull that one off. He's wearing a t-shirt tonight. Uh, Brian did kind of peek in college in the men's locker room. <laughs> I, okay, that's it. I, guys, thanks so much. Uh, big thanks to Alana for making Brian the man he is today. Uh, no, Brian, you're a great friend, a wonderful business partner, and honestly, some of the nights at the right were the best nights of my life. Thanks so much for everything, and happy birthday. One more time, let him hear it, guys. Drew Jordan. Looks like New York's gonna get a couple more bombs. Um. <laughs> All right, are you guys ready for a disgusting mole rat of a person? Let me hear it. Guys, give it up for Adam Radliff, very funny local comic and half muskrat. Let him hear it, everybody. Fucking nerve on this guy. <laughs> Fucking nerve. Frank Castillo, everybody. Yeah! Brian, how self indulgent is this night, really? What the fuck are you thinking? You're 40, you're not a celebrity. It's like, what the fuck is going on? And you're part of this. You're, this is your fault, too. Shame on you. This dais has eight arrests, and that's just Brian. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Frank Castillo, everybody, again, give it up for him. Yeah, yeah, no, that's calm down. Um, so Frank previously worked at the world famous uh, comedy store in California, and now he's hosting this midlife crisis. So, uh, yeah, his comedy career is on fire. 
bald motherfucker. Anyway. <laughs> Frank actually, you know, Frank, you don't have to agree to everything somebody offers you when you're high. You know that, right? You can say no. Frank looks like he picks up girls exclusively at quinceañeras. <laughs> Easier to pick up, I guess. He also only looks like he eats pussy when he owes somebody money. <laughs> Specifically his mom. <laughs> Wait, you're married? Yeah. Oh, God. I thought there's only one lady who was willing to marry some pathetic loser tonight. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> Shelby Morgan, everybody. Yeah. Shelby's been taking it on the chin tonight. Uh, thankfully, she's working on a second one. <laughs> Remember, Corliss laughed at that, so she hates you. Oh, man. So since starting uh, comedy, Shelby has really impressed a lot of comics. Not with her jokes, uh, mostly with her head game. In just under a year, she was able to suck her way to the middle, so that's it's impressive. Shelby is a hard worker, though, a very hard worker. She has fucked more old men than prostate cancer. A lot of people don't know this, but Shelby is part Asian and part white. And 100% racist. So there's that. <laughs> when running for Shelby, autocorrect kept changing her name because it's spelled with a C to Chubby. So even Microsoft wanted in on this roast. <laughs> Shelby, I, Shelby, I joke a lot, but you truly are a great writer. I can't rate. God damn it! I can't wait to read your suicide note. I love Shelby. She is very funny. That's not the funny part. <laughs> She's easily the third funniest person in Austin. You sold her short by one person. All right, Nathaniel, glad to see you were able to make it. But if you're here, who's like wrangling all the cards at the Home Depot? <laughs> Nathaniel looks like as a kid he had a car bed, but it was a Honda Civic. <laughs> Nathaniel is a father. Uh, that's only because he tried to use a Whataburger wrapper as a condom. <laughs> Nathaniel is like the first Mexican person who's ever sounded as racist as every white person I've ever met. <laughs> it's crazy. You'll hear it here in a second. I'm not saying that Nathaniel is racist, but his brand new daughter, I, it's like a 90% chance her first word ends in a hard R, so. I'm not saying he's racist, but when the Kyle Rittenhouse verdict was uh, announced, he got a hard erection, so. Drew Jordan, I don't know why I didn't do you before Amador, so. When... <laughs> When Brian was looking for a partner in this show, you guys don't know this, he's actually not the first partner he picked, but like, he was originally, he's like, I want to find the edgiest comic in Houston, that'll be my partner, and literally all comics said no, so he ended up with Drew. Don't be, don't be fooled by um, his tattoos, he's a huge pussy. It's actually no surprise that Drew has tattoos, because he loves taking little pricks. I'm, I'm kidding. He likes huge cocks. <laughs> the fuck? Drew, when I first met you, I thought you might be gay. Six years later, I'm convinced of it. <laughs> Drew moved to New York because his girlfriend said, I'll suck your dick every single time you have a good set. That was six months ago. He hasn't had a blowjob in two years. From a woman. Drew really is a nice guy, so like he's really hard to uh, shit on. Uh, unfortunately, he has Crohn's disease, who so has no problem shitting on himself. You thought I forgot about that, huh? No.
See, if you don't know, Crohn's disease makes you shit yourself. That's how it works. <laughs> All right, on to Brian, right? Brian, the man of the hour. Make some noise for Brian one more time. Brian does run the best comedy show in Houston that uh, a wife's money can buy. Um, I say wife because I've never met you. I don't know your name because you never show up to shows. You're almost as absent as the eyebrows. God, he's creepy looking, right? What a waste of abs and hair and money. Anyway, it's no secret that Brian's wife is the breadwinner. That's no, I'm not telling any stories outside of school, but um, Brian talks about it in his act like uh, every, uh, every time. And has anyone here seen Brian's act? So you know it hasn't changed in at least three years. Yeah. But you know what they say, if it ain't broke, marry it and get her to buy you a comedy club. <laughs> Brian is actually proud of the fact that a lot of women come to his show, uh, which is crazy because he hasn't made his wife come once. He can't vibrate? That's next. That's his next installment. Brian's life is extremely regimented. So he even schedules out five minutes every hour to think racist thoughts. <laughs> Speaking of which, doesn't Brian look like he watched uh, Dahmer just to learn how to become friends with black people? It was research. Brian looks like an Abercrombie and Fitch uh, mannequin. By that I mean he has nice abs, but it's completely dead behind the eyes. That's a lot of people making fun of your eyes, bro. <laughs> You're scary. You have sex with that? At least twice, I guess. If those are his. Anyway. Look, guys, we all, we've all been shitting on Brian. We've all been shitting on his comedy in particular, but Brian actually does have fantastic timing. The two times that his wife was planning on leaving him, he got her pregnant both times. <laughs> all right, thank you very much for having me, Brian. You do run a great show here in, in town. You've given a lot of opportunities to a lot of comedians to be underpaid and pick up table tents after their show. So thank you very much. Nice round of applause. He's about to go drink a nice glass of milk, right? Because he needs the calcium. Okay. You guys having fun? Yeah. You guys are, yeah, we're really beating the shit out of this guy. We, I love how he gave us all like cutouts of how like dope his abs are. And he was just like, make fun of my looks. And then we just shat on his comedy this whole time. <laughs> Friends, right? All right. Uh, you guys ready for your next comic? Let me hear it. <laughs> this next comic. Uh, threatened to beat me up in the Home Depot parking lot. Guys, nice round of applause for Nathaniel Amador! I'm not being paid enough for this. Shout out to Frank Castillo. Or not. Don't give a shit. Um, doesn't he look like a millennial Mr. Potato Head? His accessories are like Adderall, a vape pen, and various subscriptions to OnlyFans accounts. <laughs> poor dude. Fucking poor dude. He looks like Adam Radliff's half-brother, doesn't he? Fuck. <laughs> That's unfortunate. Adam Radliff, everybody. Wow, that was bad, wasn't it? Good. I, as soon as I saw he was booked on this roast, I thought he was dying. This make-a-wish type shit. What the fuck happened, Adam? <laughs> You talentless, bloated ginger. <laughs> you look like a leprechaun for a mascot for a cereal that says, uh, unlucky charms. <laughs> Surprisingly, he does not live with his parents, but I've been to his apartment and he fucking should. It's, <laughs> it is not nice. It is, 
Drew Jordan, everybody. Drew, up here looking like a like a gay redneck. <laughs> Featuring the new star of Dick Dynasty. He lifts up his hat and the hair comes with it. It's, That's all I had for Drew. <laughs> thanks for, I, I, I'm lying, man. Uh, thanks for coming to, back to Houston. Drew just moved uh, back to uh, New York. Yeah, yeah, he wanted to be closer to a, a thriving gay community and further from the shame of his parents. <laughs> Shelby Morgan, yeah, she did good. She is a, an extremely funny young lady, and you know I mean it because she is as ugly as sin. Uh, <laughs> you don't have to lie to ugly chicks. You're gonna do great, Elena, I promise. Um, <laughs> she, uh, Shelby is uh, half white and half Asian, and, and living proof that not all mixed babies are cute. If you want to support her comedy endeavor, just uh, order DoorDash and tell her to keep it. Uh, <laughs> Shelby has fucked more comics than the writer's strike. Thanks, Frank. Don't want to take credit. Don't want to. All right, fucking Brian. I've been looking forward to this ever since he didn't book me on the fucking festival. He booked half of fucking Houston, hired half-naked homeless people to hula hoop in the middle of the goddamn street. But I didn't make the cut. Right? What? So, uh, I mean all of this. In 2020, Brian opened a comedy club named The Riot right after the George Floyd murder because, and I quote, if anyone's gonna profit on the death of an un unarmed black man, it's gonna be me. <laughs> and during his short tenure as a comedy club owner, he has exploited more talented minorities than a Jewish record label owner. Brian has produced more shows that he has starred in than Tyler Perry. Uh, Brian's uh, had a lot of recent success. Four days out of the week, you can see him on TV, specifically these two TVs. Brian's uh, comedy career is a lot like his Peloton. He, he gets his workout, but he ain't going anywhere. <laughs> I actually brought that bike. I brought that bike for him to sit on. And I was like, that, that's gonna be fucking uncomfortable. But then I remembered his ass has been through more, so. <laughs> Keep clapping them cheeks, Elena, you got it. They say uh, Brian's been doing the same 10 minutes for years now, and I, I gotta take your word for it. I leave the room every time he starts. I... <laughs> it's the only way I can respect him, you know? It's... Fun fact, uh, a 50 Cent is Brian's favorite rapper. It's also how much he pays for a showcase spot. <laughs> this, is, this is costing him all of $2. Uh, <laughs> Brian has a bright future in real estate. Yeah, I didn't think that was gonna work either. It's fine. Brian met his wife at a frat party, is that correct? Yeah, he introduced himself after the Rufalin wore off. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 
Brian has a, a podcast. Do you still do it called Breaking Down Bits? Yeah, yeah nobody watches it. Nobody <laughs> fucking. Did he make you do it, Frank? Was that part of the contract? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't, he didn't want to do that. He didn't want to do this. But here we all are just trying to get some of that chiropractor money. Thanks. Appreciate that. Um, Brian's wife chose a career in uh, chiropractic care after years of carrying his fat dead weight. I should not have ended on that. Fuck. I guess I gotta get sincere. Uh, <laughs> Brian's cool, I guess. I mean, I just... He asked me when I can do a show, I tell him when, and you know, we just exchange money and leave it at that. And, it's uh nah he's really done a lot for this comedy scene he's booked me more than anyone else here in town so i really want to thank you for that dude i appreciate that um don't hold any of this against me although i mean it to my core from the bottom of my heart you are a piece of shit um I, <laughs> he's happily married you can tell by the by the shirtless selfies he's constantly posting just a proud father you know because his kids hardly know him uh, Seriously, dude, thanks for this. And uh, I mean, this isn't narcissistic at all. Just uh, <laughs> booking your own fucking roast, inviting your family and paying us pennies on the dollar to make fun of you. Uh, but thanks, honestly, I, I appreciate it. I'm Nathaniel Amador, y'all have a good night. Holy shit, we're getting paid for this? That's wild, all right. Uh, nice round of applause, let him hear it. Nathaniel. Yeah. I do actually, before I move, I do want to say, I didn't get to say my nice thing about Brian, but uh, he was one of the first guys to give me a full weekend, and I really, truly appreciate him. So thank you guys. Thank you so much, Doc. I really appreciate that. I will be your token Mexican anytime you want. Um, you ready for your next comic? Yeah! This next comic coming up to the stage. He's a sweet guy. Uh, I've met him here, and I'm really excited to see what he's about to say. Guys, nice round of applause for Zach Lyons! Hey, y'all. So I just want to clarify, I'm not a comedian. Uh, Brian's my boss, so that'll make a lot more sense when I tell these jokes. Um, so I wrote about one joke for everyone on the dais. So uh, Frank, thank you for calling me sweet. I appreciate it. Frank is one of my favorite comedians that have come through. Uh, Frank, you look like Mr. Potato Head if you did too much DMT. Um, <laughs> Drew, uh, Drew used to be the producer of this club, uh, and then he left, and I took his job. Um, Drew looks like the worst playable character in the Tony Hawk Pro Skater. Um, <laughs> um, Drew, fuck you, you stole my Adam has a baby teeth joke. But uh, I wrote a new one, it's really good. Adam uh, looks like his fingers smell like hot dogs. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Nathaniel, you uh, you look like you say racist shit about the other construction workers at your job. <laughs> and then uh, Shelby is the sluttiest camp counselor at the YMCA. So find out your local branch. Uh, and then also, someone told me right before you also look like you put cigarettes out in your pussy, but I, I didn't I didn't write that so. <laughs> I just thought it'd be good enough to say. Um, but this is about Brian. Um, I have a few cards. Elena, I'm sorry. Uh, that's, that's his wife. Get a round of applause for Elena, by the way. If, if they stay together after this show, I will be impressed. Um, all right. Brian, look at you in your Peloton. You work out so much. I mean, you train almost every day of the week. He's the fittest he's ever been. He cycles and trains like a thi uh, he cycles and trains like a triathlon. But the only contest you're ever gonna win is the Aryan race. <laughs> um, I actually was 40 pounds heavier when Brian first hired me at this job. Uh, both of our employees after that, our second and third employee, were both women. 
Uh, so I thought at first Brian just liked uh, employees with big tits. Um, <laughs> Uh, but after tonight, actually after seeing these posters and, and Fat Brian, I think he just missed his own tits. Um, <laughs> um, Brian, Brian isn't racist, uh, but he was worried about the name The Riots as a comedy club name because he was afraid black people might show up. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, Brian, Brian loves to network. He's always talking to people at the job. Actually, uh, when I first logged into the Riot's Instagram account, I noticed that he would actually DM a bunch of beautiful women and bring them to the comedy club, only to leave them alone at the bar for the entire night and not talk to them. Um, which means, actually, just like his comedy, he doesn't have any closers. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, you're also a risk taker. Um, Brian actually took a chance on Brian and gave himself his first ever headlining spot here. Yeah, how about that? Give a round of applause for that. Earn his spot. Um, Brian, Brian's mantra at work, or mantra at work, is we'll make it work. And I love that, I really do. Uh, so much so as the uh, manager of sales, customer service, marketing, all tickets, and local booking, I know what he means in his heart that it means uh, Zach will make it work. Uh, thank you for that. Um, <laughs> in fact, um, I, Brian has, uh, actually hasn't posted any events for the riot in about over a year now. I've been posting all, all ticketing, all the shows on there. Uh, so I didn't think he would notice. I put a little prank on him if you want to pull up the TV screen behind me. Um, I added a photo. And then uh, added some photos on the bottom. If you want to scroll down there a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's you and Mr. Potato that I photoshopped that. Uh, I'm good at my job, what can I say? Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I thought that was good. Uh, that, that's it, that's it. Uh, <laughs> um, and then I'll, uh, I'll leave on this. I'll leave on this. So, Brian, you're, uh, you're becoming an old man. So I brought you some gifts for your roast. Save it for the punchline. All right, so we got, uh, we got a few different things. Let's see what we got first. Your stage presence, you're killing Thank it. Thank you, I'm killing <laughs> it. Uh, so I got sunscreen right here. Uh, that's good for the skin and also for your neck tattoo back there, keeping it looking clean. And uh, Alka Setzel for this job, it stresses you out. I also got baby powder for your tiny nuts. And then, uh, you know, you'll need that. You'll need that. And then uh, most importantly, you know, accidents happen. So I, I, I want you to be prepared. I got you some diapers, male, male adult diapers. Give a couple to Drew. Yeah, here, here. <laughs> Crohn's disease. Thank you, Brian. Best boss I ever had. Have a great night. Nice round of applause for Broke Hatchback Mountain. Yeah. Oh my God, that was so funny. He was so, so funny. All right, are you guys ready for the owner of this club to roast? Yeah. All right, nice round of applause for Elena Pagnani Gendron. Let her hear it! Short. Okay. Hey everyone, I'm Elena. Um, I'm sure you heard about me from Brian. Um, I'm a real person, but a fake doctor. Okay? <laughs> I'm a chiropractor. I'm used to focusing, I'm used to fixing broken men, but usually they pay me. <laughs> Brian always makes fun of me for not being a real doctor, but I'm as real of a doctor as you are a comedian and a fitness professional. <laughs> So 
we just celebrated 10 years of marriage. We've been together for 18 years, six arrests, five failed businesses, two children, and 12 pant sizes. <laughs> Let me give you two truths and a lie about my husband. One, he's banned from Canada. Two, he used to be addicted to cocaine. Three, he's funny. <laughs> the lie is that he's funny. <laughs> a lot of people think that Brian got into cycling to lose weight. It wasn't. It was because he has a DUI. <laughs> We all heard about Brian's Peloton joke. It's gay sex without the penetration. Who here has heard that joke before? Okay, yeah, yeah. Well, let me, tell, let me address this picture up front, okay? Brian's rubbing BioFreeze on his ass. He's sore from getting penetrated. Brian used to get drunk and pee our bed. Now he gets on stage sober and shits the bed. I'm taking half your shit. <laughs> Brian used to meal prep lasagna, or as he called it, upside down pizza. <laughs> I'm not saying Brian is as bad at sex as he has, is at comedy, but I've lit him early in the bedroom. <laughs> that's a comedy joke, I think. Yeah, that's a comedy joke. <laughs> I didn't take Brian's last name for obvious reasons. <laughs> it's, to, it's to make the divorce easier. Honestly, if we ever got divorced, I just get half my shit back. <laughs> okay. But really, my love, happy birthday. I've loved you since the moment I saw you. I've loved you skinny. I've loved you fat. <laughs> I've loved you sober. <laughs> I've loved you drunk. I've loved you unemployed and I've loved you thriving. I love doing life with you and I love what we've built. One, two, three. We're in this together. Happy 40th. Oh shit, that almost, that made me cry a little bit. That was fucking so beautiful. Nice round of applause. Yeah, man. that was fucking sick. Oh my God, how great of a job was that? Let her hear it one more time. That was so fucking funny. Oh. Now, are you guys ready for the birthday boy? Are you ready for the man of the hour? Get up off that fucking Peloton. Let him hear Brian Gendron! All right, how am I gonna follow that, dude? She's one more time for that. Holy shit! She's so nervous. She's so nervous about that. She did great. All right, um, and then uh, give it up for Frank, man. Frank said uh, he came out and did this. He flew all the way from L.A. Frank's what happens when you can't afford Jeff Ross. Okay, yeah, you gotta you gotta bring in a fucking burnt minion. That's what you gotta do. <laughs> so thanks for being here, Frank. I'm glad to help your career in this. Uh, <laughs> I don't think this is helping you, dude. Um, all right. Uh, so good to have everybody out here tonight. Um, a lot of friends and family came out to support me. It's good to have uh, Drew Jordan. Drew Jordan flew in from Newark. Give it up for Drew. Drew used to, Drew used to be my co-producer here at the, the Riot. Drew, you little beta bitch. You've always been, always been the Robin to my Batman. Uh, yeah, it's true. They, they talked about it earlier that uh, Drew's wife left him for a woman. And everybody saw that coming because she's always had a taste in pussies. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> we started comedy together, me, Drew, Adam, all these guys. Uh, Adam, remember we used to go to open mics? You know, we were out there looking for laughs. Drew was out there looking for heroin. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No, they, 
Thanks for being here, Drew. And just uh, and this is this is from the, Drew. Uh, last year, won uh, uh, well, he's a award winning film director, and he's shooting some specials with us next year, next weekend here at the Riot. So just give it up for Drew. Drew's such an important part of this thing. Helped us with the comedy festival. Thanks for being here, dude. Um, Adam Radliff. Adam, you <laughs> look at you, dude. You look like every birth defect all in one. Is what that <laughs> <laughs> You're, yeah, he thinks he's handsome. Yeah, <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, dude. I don't know. I'm get, I'm getting a sunburn just looking at you, dude. All right. <laughs> Believe it or not, he's actually got a pretty girlfriend. She kind of looks like Megan Trainer, which is I, the only thing that she could possibly see in this guy is herself, her reflection, and is her <laughs> the only thing. <laughs> But, uh, but no, for real, Adam, thanks for being here, dude. Uh, uh, we're building a comedy room in, in Katy and Adam's and helping me with that. So give him up for that. Adam's a, a huge help. I'm not paying him anything for it, but thank you for doing it. Uh, man, Nathaniel Amador, man. That was, uh, that was interesting, dude. You're a, you're, a, you're a good writer. Not tonight, though. That was, uh, <laughs> not that great. I've seen him do better. I have, uh. He's got a lot on his plate, though. He's a new dad, you know what I mean? He's a new dad. He's got new dad energy. You know, he gets to talk to his little girl. He's like, you could be anything you want. You could be president, you know? But uh, you've heard him talk. This guy, there's no way those genetics can be president. The only polls she's working on. <laughs> See what I'm saying? Yeah, all right. <laughs> she's cute, though. She's cute. Oh. <laughs> Whew. I knew Shelby was going to get me, dude. Shelby Morgan, everybody. Shelby Morgan came all the way from Austin to roast my ass. Shelby. Shelby, Shelby, you salacious side chick, you. Look at you. Shelby's been with more mar so many married men. She thought that Valentine's Day was on February 15th. She really thought that. She really... <laughs> Shelby's a pretty girl, dude. She is. She, but we're sad to see her leave. She was in Houston for a while. Uh, she was an eight while she was here in Houston. She's like a ten in Austin, uh, pants size. Uh, she's really been, really been enjoying the Austin barbecue. Uh, <laughs> uh, Shelby's known for for dating comedians. Dated uh, lots of comedians. Uh, yeah, she really likes uh, their material on her face. Uh, that's how she, she knows you don't let a comedian come in you. Look at these mutants. <laughs> you know, you got to swallow that. That's the only responsible way. Shelby knows. Oh, man. I can't make fun of Zach. He's too sensitive. No, fuck it. I'm going to make fun of Zach. <laughs> Give me some diapers. Uh, Zach, you saw Zach, right? Dude, Zach, I'm not kidding this. Zach, is there any way we can pull up your mom's Instagram? Mom, Zach's mom is hot. She's fucking... <laughs> Zach has a MILF. He's flicking me off right now. Brent's, Brent's my door guy. Brent, is his mom's hot? Thumbs up. Yeah, he knows, all right? Which makes me wonder, where did Zach come from? Who did she fuck? A tree frog, dude? <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding, dude. You're handsome, and, and honestly, uh, dead dead honest, he talked about him doing all the work for the show. Zach does all the fucking work for the show. You see those pictures of me by the pool? That doesn't happen without Zach. So give it up for Zach for running this fucking room. Couldn't do without him. And give it up for my wife for funding this room. Uh, <laughs> thank you for having a responsible job. Man, you're right. I did. I used to be a, a piss the bed drunk, and I pissed on her a few times. It's true. I don't. That, I only pee on the ones that I like. Okay, that's the that's the thing. But I, I, look, I gave you that warm feeling. Okay. And she married me. So what I'm trying to tell you is she likes to be peed on. Okay, that is that is what I'm sharing with you guys tonight. <laughs> So for my 40th birthday, uh, <laughs> all right. she had a lot, of, a lot of talk about her being a chiropractor, not a real doctor yet. You know, the, the whole reason of this is that she, she couldn't get into med school. That's true. She couldn't get into med school. Uh, that's, like, uh, that's like somebody who wanted to be an astronaut uh, that ended up being a girl who's into astrology. Okay, that's what that is. Yeah. The only star she doesn't believe in is me. You heard her. <laughs> Yeah. Um, 
you guys, uh, you know, really, uh, that, that's really it for jokes for me. I, I got to come from the heart on this. Um, it's just, it's fucking incredible that we, we come up with a, with an idea to, to put a, a comedy show together in this, this stupid attic, okay? And it turns into this fucking, this thing that we have here in Houston where we're doing over 600 shows a year and we're putting on a comedy festival and we're opening rooms in Katy and rooms in Brooklyn and we're honestly one of the fastest growing comedy brands in the country and one of the most respected rooms for comics that are touring from across the country to come in. So it's been absolutely incredible to build that for Houston. Uh, to have the team that I have and then the wife that puts up with my shit and my horrible comedy and uh, and, uh, and, and and allow me to go out and do this and, and like go to open mics and tell her it was my job and she would laugh in my face for, for and, and look here we are so um, it just absolutely incredible I had no idea it would get to this point uh, I'm 40 I don't we'll, we'll deal with that later uh, <laughs> But I just, I can't thank uh, Elena and my family and all the people that came from, and people that came in from, from New Orleans and from New York and, and uh, just people I haven't seen in a long time. I can't wait to catch up with you guys. Uh, we are going to have a party and a band and stuff after. I hope you guys stick around and hang out and party with us. And then make sure you guys write those afterburns. Get, take a few minutes here to, to make fun of all this dais and we'll, we'll read them. And uh, guys, I'm just so blessed to be able to do this. Um, one more time for the bartenders, for Rudyard's, for you guys, for my family, for my wife, for Frank, this dais. I love you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. Nice round of applause. Let him hear it. Hell yeah, man. You should be very proud of everything that you've created here, for reals. One more time, let them hear it. This is a beautiful club. I've had some of the best sets I've had here. This is one of the funnest nights. His wife's amazing. The staff's phenomenal. Zach, Mara, everyone that works here. So please, nice round of applause for them, too. Let them hear it. All right. Who's collecting all these things? Oh, okay. Oh, six, six, six. We can go ahead and start passing them up. All right, cool, sweet. So while we're waiting, we're going to go ahead and let Brian do another 10 minutes real quick. And then, uh, <laughs> you know, I actually, for real, I love that Chick-fil-A joke. If I could hear it one more time, it would just make my night better, you know? Oh. Said no one ever. It's so mean. All right. Make sure to go ahead and pass these around. You see two guys coming around. Go ahead and hand them to them. There's all, not a lot of good writers here. All right, I can see it. There's only like five of them. Oh, okay. This bald guy wrote a lot. Awesome. Yeah, you and me, dog. Bald brother. Yeah. All right. Are there any cops in here? Just want to make sure. Just want to double. No, I'm just kidding. She wanted someone. Oh, okay. All right, uh, go ahead and start bringing those up. We'll go ahead and get this started. How do you want to do this? You want to just uh, each one of us read out our owns? Oh, okay, sick, sick, sick. Sweet. Now I'm just going to go ahead and fill dead air. All right, this is pretty great. Taking a piss? All right, solid. Oh, yeah, go ahead and sort them. Just give me all mine up top. All right, I'll go ahead and read this. Uh, oh, God, this is... <laughs> it's fucked up that you signed Liz. This is from Kaylee. Hey, Frank, you look like you can't find the clitoris, which is sad because your head looks like one. And Kaylee wrote a heart. Oh, man. Hey, Frank, you look like Bad Bunny's fat brother who hasn't gotten his eyebrows macheted yet. Oh, microbladed yet. Fuck. I'll read that one more time. Hey, Frank, you look like Bad Bunny's fat brother who hasn't gotten his eyebrows microbladed yet. Funny the second time around. I'll take a Bad Bunny reference. All right. Um... Oh, damn, that's good. Oh, God damn it. I read this, and then I was like, all right, I dig it. And then I realized it was written by a dude. And I was like, oh, okay, never mind. Hey, Frank, you look like someone I would have hooked up with when I didn't care who I hooked up with. The other Brian. Who's the other Brian? Raise your hand. I got to see what this Brian looks like. Yeah, I'd fuck. I ain't even gay. Oh. <laughs> 
<laughs> hey, Frank, you look like a Walmart clearance bald Mexican Pete Davidson. <laughs> Signed, one of the teachers. I got a great mass shooting joke, so that's pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, whoever, fuck whoever wrote this last one. What's the difference between Frank and an egg? Uh, an egg can't crack a joke. Which I think is a compliment? I can't remember. All right, cool. You guys ready? You guys got the other ones? We'll go to go yeah, with Drew Morgan up top. Okay, here we go. Drew, your parents are still praying it's a phase. <laughs> not bad. <laughs> not bad. <laughs> Drew, you look like Howard from Big Bang when he wore a tattoo sleeve. <laughs> okay. Drew, you've lost weight since you moved in with your girlfriend, probably because you stopped eating pussy. <laughs> I got, uh, hey girl, so. I don't know, it might be for Drew, I don't know. <laughs> you look like you are not a stranger to disappointment. <laughs> I'm actually dating one right now, so. Hey Shelby, you look like a horse girl. We did not have horse money, okay. <laughs> I fuck dogs. Hey, Ginger. <laughs> you look like Alan, the redheaded stepson from The Hangover. <laughs> <laughs> there were no gingers in The Hangover. Hey, Adam, you look like, the, you look like Santa Claus's redheaded stepson. Signed, everyone. I hope you guys are realizing comedy is a little bit harder to write than you thought. It's just trash. I know, they saw your set. <laughs> this guy's getting paid in cheese and he's making fun of me. <laughs> it's called queso, all right? <laughs> hey Adam, you look like you get a sunburn from standing close to a window. That's, that's actually true. <laughs> I'm white. Nobody cares about you? Cool enough. Oh, did no one write anything for Nathaniel? Oh. Well, yeah, because no one wants to get beat up. Jesus Christ. <laughs> These are just mean. <laughs> Is They're like, all from your wife? Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> all her handwriting. <laughs> Your closet, hey Brian, you look like your closet is full of expensive, ugly sneakers. Uh, <laughs> well, two of them aren't in there right now, so fuck you. All right. Um, the only thing tighter than your jeans is your 10 minute set you haven't updated in two years. Okay. Really leaning into that material. <laughs> I have to turn around for this one. Uh, Brian, you need a BBBL. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> That's why I Peloton. Uh, all right. Uh, you, you look like a youth pastor who raps about how rad Jesus was. <laughs> <laughs> he does. <laughs> That's the end of that. All right, thank you all so much. No, the rest of them are that good. Awesome. Yeah. I think that's it, right? Yeah, that'll be do it. That'll all do right, it, man. Perfect, dude. Thank you guys so much. You guys have a fun time? Yeah. Hell yeah. Before we leave, let's sing this man happy birthday, guys. Nice. Let's do it on Saturday night. Happy birthday to you. That's when it really felt narcissistic, right there. Yeah. That's when it really... That's he asked when it, me to do that. Uh, <laughs> oh, okay, got oh, 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 so we have a fat Brian cake afterwards. Is it okay. a, a, a fat... Is it a cake that looks like a fat Brian? 
Hell yeah, dog. This cake's gonna be able to feed everybody. <laughs> nice round of applause for all the comics you've seen tonight. Round of applause for yourself, for Brian, his wife, everyone. Thank you so much. We really couldn't have done any of this without you. Yep. Um, thank you guys so much. Stick around and party, guys. We're gonna move some tables out. We got a band coming and stuff, so hang out tonight. We're gonna have a good time. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for being here. Thank you so much. See you around. Thank you.